Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 45. Painting the condenser oil trap and after 24 hours I polished the brass top and fit the unit to the steam plant. With a very small stapler once again I make another drive belt using a different method of construction. In this clip I'm still painting the condenser tank. I'm using HMG satin black paint that I find to be absolutely perfect for these sorts of jobs. It's not matte and it's not gloss and it's not satin, it's somewhere in between. I think it's a really good finish for painting miniature steam locomotives too. I need to buy some more of this stuff, I'm down to the last can. And it would be tragic if the can ran out halfway through this job, but thankfully it didn't. I'm being really careful to avoid any drips, runs or sags. And as you can see, there's plenty of paint on there, but none of it is running. I brought the painted condenser through into the main workshop because it's a bit warmer in there. And here it is, thoroughly dry, sat on the bench 24 hours later. Now it's time to remove all the masking, starting with the silicone rubber tubing, then removing the masking tape around the top cap. And as you can clearly see, it's been very successful, not a trace of any black paint where I didn't want it. The next thing to do is to polish up the top cap. I'm using Brasso wadding for this. I do like this stuff, I've used it for many years. I used to use some stuff called Duraglit, which was just about the same. Did Duraglit and Brasso combine? I don't know. This is the outlet to the chimney, and I'm using some Loctite 542, so that when I screw on the elbow, the joint will be steam tight. The elbow is currently attached to the piece of pipe that runs underneath the chimney. Then there's another piece of pipe inside the chimney that connects to this. I also refitted the drain pipe to the condensate drain tap. The time has finally come to bolt the condenser to the baseboard. I'm removing the piping that's in the way so that I can get my Proxon motor tool into the correct position to drill some holes in the baseboard. And here I'm doing just that. The drill bit is one eighth of an inch in diameter which is tapping size for 4BA. I'm not going to thread the hole because the bolt will cut its own thread in this 1 8 of an inch diameter hole. I marked out the positions for these holes by using a spring center punch through the holes in the base of the condenser. I really hope they are in the right place. I have a full set of transfer punches in the workshop, but for some reason I cannot find them. But using the spring loaded center punch worked perfectly. Here I'm halfway through the job and I thought it was a good idea to have a bit of a clean up. After drilling all of the holes, the baseboard was a bit messy. So first of all, I used a soft paintbrush followed by my airline to blow away all the debris. I work in a disorganized chaos state in the workshop, but to do like what I'm working on to be clean. In this clip, I'm screwing the vertical exhaust pipe into the elbow from the condenser. And now being very careful that the screwdriver doesn't slip, I'm screwing the condenser onto the baseboard using some 4BA dome headed brass screws. But I did actually profile the ends of the bolts using my one inch belt sander in the outer part of the workshop. When the bolts are pointy, they're much easier to align with the holes and the thread in the wood is far easier to cut. I'm effectively turning the bolt into a tap. Now that the condenser is firmly attached to the baseboard, it was a simple job to reattach all the piping, although I did have to make an adjustment to the exhaust pipe on the S50. This made sure that all of the exhaust piping was square, and as you can see, it all looks good. In order to drill the holes in the baseboard, I also had to remove the steam inlet pipe to the S50. I'm about to reconnect that, I just didn't bother showing it. In this series I've been showing various methods of making drive belting using pieces of leather strip. And here is the latest version using lots of small staples to hold the leather together. This actually does work very well indeed. I'm going to make another short series called Experiments with Drive Belting because it occurs to me that making drive belting is not as easy as it seems. I'm going to run the engine and see what happens. And everything seems to be fine with this belt. 
I'm going to make another one, but first of all, a quick word of warning about using too much heat on leather. I don't recommend using heat on the ends of the leather that you're going to join together. Instead, I've used a sharp Stanley knife blade, as you can see here, although this is already starting to get blunt. Here is the very small stapler that I bought. I also bought a bigger one, but this one is ideal for this size of belt. It uses the smaller number 10 staples. It's very difficult to get the staples in line. Once I got them in line, I hit them with a hammer to make sure that they were fully closed. Time to try this belt. The belt that is currently on the engine is the one with three staples. The previous belt had far too many staples in it, although it was quite strong. This belt is still a little bit on the wide side and it moves around but it doesn't fall off. Even when I short circuit the terminals to the dynamo, it still doesn't fall off, so it's okay. Getting the tension right is difficult. If the belt is too tight, it will put pressure on the bearings on the engine and the dynamo, and you don't want this. Here, as you can see, I can squeeze the leather together and it springs back into shape. I pre-stretched this leather by pulling it really hard before I stapled it together, and I think this is okay. On commercial full-size leather belting, to hold the two lengths of the leather strap together, it's like a special hinge that clamps onto each end of the piece of leather, but making that in this scale would be pretty difficult. After I finished making this video, when I returned to the house, a package had been pushed through the door, and it contained this leather from my friend Andrew Stone at Black Orchard Books. This is a little bit on the thick side, but Andrew says that he has a machine that will trim leather to the thickness he wants. Once again, it's all a question of scale. This leather belting is too thick for the size of the engine and dynamo that I'm using. Although looking at it, it would be perfect for my small one and a half inch scale showman's engine. The steam plant is almost ready for a steam test. I'll probably do that later on this week. But for now, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.